What up? I'm B, and welcome to my channel where we talk about all things true crime and current events. Uh, YouTuber, tattoo artist, shoe designer, musician, all around jack of all trades, Kat Von D recently announced on Instagram that she was going to be selling all of her shares of her beauty line to a company named Kendo. And Kendo is a makeup conglomerate that basically partners with brands to help develop them and get them to a place where they're going to be really successful and profitable. Kendo has worked with brands like Fenty Beauty, Marc Jacobs Beauty, and Lip Lab. And so they were Kat Von D's partners for the past 11 years, basically, since the brand launched. And Kat Von D announced that she was going to be selling. She was not going to be receiving any further profit. All the shares are going to Kendo. She wants to focus on her shoe line and her music career. Apparently, she's going to drop an album in the spring and go on an international tour. I was surprised that she was saying that she was, you know, it was her long-awaited album because I didn't know that Kat Von D did music and I looked it up and it's fine. Um, so best of luck to her with that. Back to the point. Kendo now owns all of Kat Von D's shares to Kat Von D Beauty. They are rebranding, they're renaming, it's going to be KVD Vegan Beauty and they are going to be managing it from here on out. Kat Von D will not receive any profit. She will not have any say in product, design, stuff like that. Like it's just straight line. She's no longer a part of it. It's interesting that she's decided to do this. Kat Von D has faced a lot of backlash over the past two years. There's been quite a few things, quite a few controversies that she's been involved in. And so her makeup line has steadily been going downhill not necessarily the quality of it, but just people wanting to buy it. The popularity is not nearly what it was even four years ago. And so um, it doesn't surprise me that she's decided to sell the shares, step away. It's probably not as profitable for her as she wanted it to be. And they do have a lot of good products. So it, it makes sense to do that. However, the main question that everyone is asking now is, since she has sold her shares, since she no longer is a part of it, she's not going to get any profit, she has no say in it, are we going to buy her products now? And I'm pretty sure the answer is no. Some people might, you know, some people can separate the art from the artist or the makeup from the person who founded the makeup company, you know, and it makes sense, like, She's not going to get any profit from it. It's going to be a completely different company. They have good products. Why would we not buy it? But here's why I don't think this rebrand is really going to make much of a difference. People think that Kat Von D is an anti-vaxxer and a Nazi. If you take five minutes to do a simple Google search, it's pretty easy to find that she's not. Let's talk about the anti-vaxxing first. On Instagram, before Kat Von D's son was born, she was talking about becoming a first-time mother, kind of judgment from others, you know, figuring this whole thing out, and she said that she was going to be raising a natural vegan child without vaccinations. And people were pissed. Rightfully so. Um, vaccinations are incredibly important to the health of not only your child but to people all around your child and um, it, it's it's extremely foolish to say that you are not going to vaccinate your child when they are that young you know as you get older there are some like the flu shot every year that's that's kind of um, up to your discretion on who you're around who you might expose to the flu stuff like that but when you're young getting those vaccinations like polio, measles, mumps, like the Tdap vaccination, all of that stuff, that stuff is incredibly important. And so obviously people were mad, like I said, rightfully so. She has since come out and said that, you know, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, I'm just a first-time mother, I'm questioning the ingredients, I'm wanting to make sure that I'm putting the the right things, the right vaccinations, the right ingredients, I'm making the right decisions for my kid. And I 1000% get it. Um, but in addition to that, she, she didn't come out and say that she's going to vaccinate her child. She said 
that she was going to let her pediatrician guide her. And so what I'm hoping that means is that her pediatrician is going to tell her, your child needs vaccinations, and she's going to say, okay, thank you, doctor. Um, you know, th this answer allows her to side with Western medicine, saying that she's going to turn to her pediatrician and confer with him or her for guidance, but she hasn't come out and straight up said, I've learned vaccinations are helpful and healthy and necessary for my child, you know? And I get it, the people, if anyone's an anti-vaxxer in here, you're gonna come back and say like, vaccine allergies, people getting sick from vaccinations, causing autism, don't even come to me with that. Don't even come to me with the autism link, first of all. Second of all, yes, some people do have allergic reactions to vaccinations. It just happens, it's rare, but it happens. It's like doing open heart surgery. There can be complications, it can end up going poorly, and you can face serious damages from it, but open heart surgery is still a good thing that helps a lot of people. So while Kat Von D has not come out and said straight up that she supports vaccinations now, the fact that she said that she was just being a mom who was concerned about the her first time being a mom, her first kid, and the fact that she was going to rely on her pediatrician I mean, I think it's very clear that she's not anti-vaccination. I'm sure she's leery of it, but I don't know. It, as a kid, as a little baby, like the vaccine schedule seems pretty intense. And so I get being concerned about it. I get, I get thinking that it's a lot. I don't think that that makes her anti-vax. But I think that being an anti-vaxxer is something that is just going to be forever synonymous with Kat Von D. And just because she was a first-time mom, questioning the validity and necessity of all these vaccines to her first child. The second controversy. This one is a little bit harder to debunk. There's a bit more of a sordid history when it comes to Kat Von D being a Nazi, but let's talk about it. Let's, let's get into the overview. So in 2008, a headshot of Kat Von D was presented to the network executives of Miami Inc., which was a show that she was on, and it had some anti-Semitic remarks on it, is the nice way that I'm going to say it. And um, basically, the person who showed the network executives was like, this is disgusting. I can't believe she would say stuff like that. Like, we need to get her off the show, get her off the network. And Kat Von D claims that this was a forgery. She said that throughout her time on that show, she was having pretty serious kind of tension and a bit of an altercation with a specific cast member who was also on there. And basically what she said in an interview was, I have no idea who actually forged the message, but what I do know is that the man who treated me so terribly on set took this 8x10 photo and threatened the network, saying that if they don't cancel LA Inc., which was her spinoff that she was getting, um, that he would go to a different media outlets and release the 8x10 with the forged message on it. Basically, she's claiming that somebody went and wrote this message on her photo and then was using it to kind of ruin her career. And I don't know about you, but if I was anti-Semitic, I don't know that I would write an anti-Semitic message on my own headshot uh, because it's pretty, uh, pretty controversial to do so. You know, most people who uh, are like racist or have certain biases towards other groups of people, they they kind of do it on the lowdown a little bit or, or they'll do it in a way that's like trying to pretend like their views are for the greater good. You know what I mean? People, people hide behind like moral superiority when they are being vocal about their bigotry. And the, the message that was on the 8x10 photo was just straight up disgusting. And so if, if Gavon D, it's not funny. Um, if she was a Nazi, I think she would know better than to write a message like that on her own headshot. That's just what I'll say. But that's basically what sparked this whole thing about her being a Nazi. And some of the choices she made after didn't necessarily help her case. In 2010, she started dating Jesse James, and that's Sandra Bullock's ex-husband. Uh, a picture came out of him 
wearing a Nazi military hat and doing like two fingers on his upper lip as a Hitler stash. And Kat Von D wasn't in the photo. This dude apparently collects a ton of like World War II memorabilia. So good for him. I mean, I like history as much, if not more than the next person. But I also don't know that I would be so cavalier as to wear, ugh, wear a Nazi hat and take a picture, like pose with it. You know, that's on my head. I'd be like, look at, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to legitimately think about it. If I was collecting World War II memorabilia, would I even want anything from Germany? Can't say that I would. But anyway, to each his own. Um, you can collect whatever you want, I guess, but the picture was bad. It's insensitive. It, it shouldn't have been taken, let alone posted. And even though Kat Von D wasn't in the picture because she was dating him, of course, people were already talking about the photo from two years ago. And now they've got this, uh, her being associated with someone who is appearing in a way that looks anti-Semitic. However, I personally don't think that that picture is anti-Semitic. I just think it's somebody being dumb and thinking that they're funny pretending to be Hitler. And about five years after that, she named one of her lipsticks Selection, and that's S-E-L-E-K-T-I-O-N, which is a German term for choosing people for concentration camps, essentially. And so obviously people were pretty upset about it. They were saying that that was an insensitive way to spell it, you know, Kat Von D should know better, they they can't believe that this got approved, all of that stuff. And selection, spelled that way, is on a list of terms that you should avoid using because it, in Germany, because it refers to bad associations during World War II. However, I read an article about the list that gave a few examples of words that you shouldn't use, and selection was one of them, but lager was also one of them. Lager refers to the actual camps, apparently, and we say lager all the time. It's a type of beer. So obviously that's insensitive. That's in bad taste. I don't know why she would pick that name, but I would be surprised if the intent was to be anti-Semitic. And finally, Cavani's current husband, Rafael Reyes, who she married in 2018. He has a swastika right here on his neck with a Star of David in the center, which sounds horrifying, but the swastika, it's not tilted like it was with the Nazis. It's just kind of straightforward. And when it's done like that, that's not the German way of doing it. You know, the German Nazis, they had it on the tilt and people have been using swastikas for thousands of years before that to mean positive things not associated with any type of hate or negativity and her husband actually said about his tattoo was what I have tattooed in Navajo iconography is called a whirling log and can denote abundance prosperity healing and luck and as far as the star of David goes I think most of us like most people who grew up in school learning about world war ii or people in uh Europe in that area we see that and we're gonna think that that's Jewish and so it's like that's odd why is that in your Navajo whirling log I don't get it but from what I've read the Star of David is also part of Navajo iconography it kind of refers to a balance um when you have those when you have it presented like that and it kind of refers to the phrase as above so below and so it's about being in unity with with the earth and with nature and that's just from what I've read I'm obviously not an expert on it but I wanted to um, give, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt and, and really try and look at people's intent in getting things. And so if he has a tattoo with a straight on whirling log that's not tilted <laughs> as a Nazi symbol, and he's saying that this is part of his background, part of his heritage, who am I to say that it's not? Who am I to assume that it's a symbol of hate when he has said that it's not? Because here's the thing. The things that they have done are very much outright and outspoken. And so, like I said, if you're going to be vocally racist or anti-Semitic or 
biased or bigoted towards somebody, you're not going to do something big and then shrink back and be like, oh no, I didn't mean it like that. You know, like you're going to be proud of it or you're going to try and hide it. With them, it just looks like it's a series of, with Kat Von D, it's like a series of misfortunes. You know, somebody forged that photo of her. Somebody that she dated posted a dumb picture and because she was associated with them, now she's associated with a Nazi even more. Then she's got the lipstick. I don't have an explanation for that, but I can only imagine that if she was naming a lipstick selection to be anti-Semitic, she would come out and say it and be like, if you're Jewish, don't buy my stuff because I don't care about you. You know, like that is how I would picture it because that is a bold thing to do. And if you're, if you're bold enough to do that, I feel like you would be bold enough to stand behind it. I think it was just a bad choice. It was an insensitive choice. And as for her husband's tattoo, looking at it, it is very clearly not a Nazi tattoo. It is a swastika. And like I said, most of us, we associate the swastika with Hitler and with Germany and World War II. But it was used for thousands of years for other things before that. So, Kat Von D might not have the utmost trust in vaccines and might be a little bit leery about them. Kat Von D might have been in the wrong place at the wrong time and associated with the wrong people in the past and had made some poor decisions in terms of being sensitive to others. But looking into all of this, I think it's pretty clear that she is not completely anti-vax and she's not a Nazi. But people don't care about that. They care about cancel culture. They care about the righteous indignation. 1000% don't support anti-Semites. Don't support people who are anti-vax and who are putting the herd immunity to, to, to the test and putting their kids at risk and putting the people around their kids at risk. Absolutely. You do not have to support those people. However, I think that this is just another symptom of our outrage culture of hearing something secondhand or hearing just a part of the story and then running with it. And I understand that not everyone has the time to look into everything and get the details and they're just going to, you know, take what they hear on Twitter or take what they hear from somebody calling her out on YouTube and they're going to go with it. They're going to run with it. But I think that it's important to if you're going to go all the way to canceling someone, just look into it a little bit, you know, and because it has been so long that people have had a distaste for her because of these things, if they haven't looked into it by now, they're not going to look into it to see if they're going to purchase from KVD Vegan Beauty in the future. KVD Vegan Beauty is still going to be Kat Von D Beauty in people's minds. It just is. It doesn't matter if she doesn't profit from it. It doesn't matter if she has no creative control, no input, nothing like that. She has no association whatsoever with the brand. People are going to associate that with her. And for some reason, she has been chosen as the person who gets canceled for this, despite having multiple other problematic YouTubers and beauty influencers who could be canceled for pretty much the same thing, but for some reason we've given them a pass or we've let them slide by or we've decided that they've changed. And I just think it's interesting, you know, Kat Von D and Jeffree Star used to be really close friends and for some reason they had a falling out and they've pretty much been accused of very similar things, of racially insensitive things. And I don't know what it is if Jeffree Star is just more prominent in the YouTube community and he posts so much more that people are willing to look past that and embrace him for who he is and, and say that he's been willing to change because they see him more often, whereas she is not so much on YouTube. She has like 760,000 subscribers. Jeffrey has millions, you know? She doesn't post that much. And so we don't see her really in her everyday life like we do with Jeffrey. And I think that that's why her business has suffered so incredibly much because she is a little bit more private. She doesn't post on YouTube. She doesn't have you come with into her home and like walk you through her day or anything like that. And she just appears to be a little bit more private in that respect. And so if that's how she prefers to be, great. She shouldn't feel the need to overshare anything or 
be somebody she's not. And I think she's just kind of accepted the fact that the beauty community has made their decision. They've spoken and she's going to kind of cut her losses and move on, which I think is commendable. You know, you don't always have to continue something if it's not working. And that makes me kind of sad that this has happened because so many people make mistakes. They are associated with the wrong people. They have a shady past, whatever it is. And some people are allowed to change and some people aren't. And I think it's just kind of a bummer because she had some really great products and I think people really liked what she put out. But because of the bad choices and words and some of the bad associations in the past and the unwillingness to be a little bit more vocal and a little bit more connected with her audience, she's going to have to step away from something that it appeared that she really cared about. But that's where we're at. She has sold her shares and she's going to be focusing on her shoe line and her music career. And honestly, sometimes I think it's best to walk away from things that don't work. She knew that people weren't going to look into it. They weren't going to forgive her. Her brand wasn't going to suddenly start booming again. And so she made a smart business decision. But I also don't think that it's going to change anything. I've seen a lot of people saying that they still won't buy it and it really doesn't surprise me. So having said all that, learning a little bit more about kind of some of the facts behind these claims. What do you think? Does it make a difference for you knowing that she's not going to be receiving any profit or having any hand within the company? Or are you still kind of just like, no, it's associated with her. I don't want to buy anything. Let me know in a comment down below. And while you are doing that, if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel, that would be incredible if you have subscribed already. Thank you so much. I love being able to just sit here, hang out, and talk about whatever. Oh, and side note, this year I wanted to get through kind of the first month of the year, see where my habits are at, see where I'm going, what I want to kind of achieve within 2020, and I'm going to be creating a vision board for that, so I'm going to be doing that at the end of the month. So if you want to see a video where we can create our vision boards together, let me know. I'm going to be making one either way, but if you want to do it with me, put that in a comment as well and we'll get it done. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Thank you so much for watching. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.